we have been visiting a lot of cafes these days like lately um instead of going to exotic food places or uh, breakfast places a trend has been seen where we have been uh, trying out new cafes and uh, all the caffeine products they have over there i don't know what happened suddenly i think it can be attributed to two things uh one is that we finally have found out what coffee actually is we grew up drinking instant coffee mixed it in hot milk um lately we have really understood wh- how coffee is prepared and what exotic coffee actually is so that is one thing second thing i have been spending quite some time in uh, coffee shops over the weekends uh, you know trying to get things done um writing podcast notes and doing research and all that it kind of gives me a little focus time when i go and sit there yeah actually sitting at home and uh, trying to do some work even though there are no uh, hindrances there still are you might just you might lose your focus and get distracted at uh, even the you know simplest things but uh, sitting in a cafe and trying to do some work is much different because you get the ambience uh, where, where you feel like you know um, your creative level is a little bit high and uh, there there are no other disturbances over there like people who are uh, living with you even your family members or someone like that so you get a lot of work done in co- uh, coffee houses yeah basically uh, for me at least it's like i order a drink i go and take a seat and i start working so uh, my general thing is when you start uh, you know uh, taking a drink it lasts for what like maybe half an hour to 45 minutes if you take it at a stretch after that whatever time you have that is additional time that you're just taking from them right so it kind of keeps you focused and also um i don't take my laptop charger with me not that it will just run out of charge but it gives me a limited limited charge because i use my phone for uh, you know for internet and phone also gets discharged so i know that i have limited time so i'm more focused on the task at hand so that kind of helps me out and i like the general ambience um, that we have at coffee places right um you know um nice music playing and this rich aroma of co- coffee it, it it's all a wonderful uh, experience uh, do you know that we we might think that coffee shops and all this uh, you know coffee culture started recently but that's not the case it started many many uh, years back in fact centuries ago in the middle east okay so we're going to talk about coffee this time Yeah, let's talk about coffee, which is one of the most favorite beverages in the world. Welcome to another episode of Writer and Geek Show. Uh, we are your hosts uh, Shankar and Vishnu. In this episode, we are going to talk about the most popular beverage in the planet, coffee. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. You know, I thought uh, Diet Coke or something would be first. No, oil is much more important than that. So many wars have been fought for oil. Yeah, let's uh, probably not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Then that's a story for another day. You know, it'll be pretty controversial if we talk about that. Probably we should, you know, put a disclaimer uh, and ask some people from some countries not to listen to it. <laughs> But I'm sure that uh, you know, even people from any country, they don't justify most of the <laughs> things that their government is doing at this point. That's anyway, true. we all know that coffee is kind of a very popular beverage. In fact, uh, in this day and age everybody wants a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. I mean, I have fallen into that uh lifestyle now. I never used to be a coffee drinker actually. I never used to even take tea or something, but these days after tasting, you know, so many different kind of coffee, I have kind of fallen in love with the entire coffee culture as such. Yeah, uh, compared to other countries in the world, India is uh, predominantly dependent on tea. Mm. like most people they want a cup of tea uh, as soon as they get up yeah. even before brushing their teeth like seriously <laughs> again uh, there is a small at least i think that you know a tea is mo- uh, there is a small uh, division within india where north india is more oriented towards tea and south indians generally like coffee like you know the south indian filter coffee is very famous i'm not saying that the entire population drinks coffee but Yes, majority is tea dependent. That is because of uh, British influence, I would assume, because Britishers like tea. Um, coffee is taking a substantial popularity these days. 
Okay, so you mentioned that uh, it's because of the British influence. We have a lot of tea drinkers over here. I don't know why uh, even then we don't have Earl Grey like really uh, popular out here. We drink, uh, what is that, tea with milk. Well, <laughs> Not with lemon and Earl Grey, whatever the, that thing is. See, the milk has been a very important part of Indian culture since beginning, right? And we like things which are like sweet and all that. Even today... Um, I like taking coffee, black coffee, um, like espresso and Americano and all, but not w- many other people feel the same way. I, I think you also like your coffee with sugar and being a little sweet and all that. Yeah, yeah. See, um, bla- black tea or black coffee, I'd go without sugar. Like, without sugar. But uh, if there is milk in the coffee, I'd prefer it to be sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, I've seen that you, you are someone who does not follow that kind of thing. And uh, one more thing I want to add, like, I've never been a coffee or tea drinker. Uh, actually, I hate tea, like the one with milk. I'd rather have probably lemon tea or iced tea. Other than that, tea is something which I never take. And coffee is something I like to have, uh, you know, uh, now and then. Even even though I've uh, started having a liking towards coffee, I'm not kind of like addicted to it. But I prefer, you know, uh, to have like one coffee every afternoon or evening. Yeah, so that's uh, so much about our, uh, you know, likings and dislikes. And I think we should uh, get into the core topic of today. Um, Well, as with human beings, coffee kind of originated in Africa. Okay. Many, many years ago. (laughs) So, uh, Africa has been a place of genesis, I would say. Everything came out of Africa, apparently, right? And um, if you look at the coffee that is existing in this world today, there are majorly two types of coffee one is called uh, arabica which is the one uh, which we normally have the one which we purchase lately uh, for our french press that is arabica coffee uh, it is a most more popular one and it's also expensive because the extraction methods are a little different from the other one which is called robusta robusta is a little more cheaper coffee um, it's more popular in you know southeast asia and places where cheaper coffee is preferred um, so Arabica is uh, Arabica coffee beans are little flatter and elongated and requires a cool to subtropical kind of temperature to grow the coffee so, plant. So it is uh, produced in places uh, where the elevation is a little too high. Yeah, you know, in uh, our state Karnataka, we have a place called Chikmangalore, right? So Chikmangalore, Chikmangalore is a, um, a place with higher elevation. They produce Arabica coffee there. And uh, the elevation is generally around 2,000 to 6,500 uh, feet. So okay. it, it's it's really, you know, um, places like hill stations. That is where these kind of coffee is grown. Um, it needs a well balance of sun, shade and moisture to grow. That is why it cannot grow in the flatlands where, uh, the, where it's not generally cool, right? Um, largest producers are Latin America. Brazil is one of the largest producers of coffee totally. I think of the world's total coffee production, 40% is produced in Brazil. What? Right? That's, a, that's a big number. And Arabia and East Africa are other areas where uh, coffee is produced. Ethiopia is one of the places where coffee is very predominantly exported. You would have seen Ethiopian coffee. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about uh, you know Ethiopian coffee. It's very popular. Yeah, and... Uh, Robusta is um, another cheaper version of uh, cheaper version of coffee, and um, the difference, major difference between the taste of Arabica and Robusta is Robusta is uh, more bitter, and it has double the amount of caffeine, and it's little cheaper to produce as well because the extraction method is not that sophisticated. That is one of the reasons that it has more caffeine as well, and um, it can grow in um, you know altitudes less than two two thousand feet and major produ- produce as uh, it's the same as the other one West Africa Brazil and all the other areas. Even Indonesia is one producer of yeah uh, Indonesia Robusta, is one right? of the major producers of Robusta. Um, the Java coffee that we ha- we have heard of uh-huh. those are basically produced in Indonesia. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> should we get into that <laughs> I, I i i actually wanted to mention that i didn't know when to bring that in uh, uh, you're welcome so when we go to the extraction method probably we can uh, you know mention uh, this copy luak yeah, as yeah. well it is one of the most rarest and most expensive coffee in the world yeah and we had a small experience so we'll get into that later yeah we got a chance to taste it and uh, 
probably we'll let you know how it uh, how how we felt about that as well uh, but i mentioned caffeine the amount of caffeine right so let's let, i i'll just explain what caffeine is so caffeine is the thing that makes coffee so special right uh, you would have heard that people say you know unless i take a co- cup of coffee in the morning i don't feel energetic and the moment they take some coffee they are, they act like you know they have taken some kind of um uh, energy drink or something yeah something like that so that the reason for that is a compound called caffeine which is an alkaloid uh, which is present in coffee tea cocoa and some other nuts and stuff like that it's not just in um, coffee it's normally a white powder very highly soluble in uh, hot water um so caffeine stimulates the central nervous system and heart and kidney as well um one of the you know uses of coffee is it can be used as a antidote to respiratory dis- depression which is normally caused by overdose like drug overdose oh. and stuff like that yeah so if you inject caffeine then there is a g- good chance that you can revive the person but these being the good things there are certain other uh, you know uh, side effects as well uh, you might get insomnia you anxiety and you'll feel irritated and all that if you take caffeine in high amounts so that's why people say that you know before going to bed try to avoid coffee because your brain will refuse to go to sleep okay so like basically people who are uh, too much into drugs probably they should keep one pack of coffee like right next to them and uh, have it if they think that they're going <laughs> to overdose yeah and they... rest of us should just not give a about coffee <laughs> yeah but that's not the case right we love coffee and people who are i mean there is a solution for that if you like coffee and you don't want to be caffeinated there is decaf coffee always available decaffeinated coffee is a coffee from which you know caffeine is basically removed not entirely there is no way you can have 100% decaf coffee but to a greater extent it's remo- removed so i mean i don't know why we would people drink de- decaf coffee because the whole point of yeah. drinking coffee yeah. is to it's like caffeine. it's almost like you know smokers having uh, what is that nicotex oh i think i've tasted that tablet it tastes Even really awful it, it actually does and uh, it said that behind that uh, they have that instruction thing so you have to just chew it once then hold it on for so like some time i have tried chewing yeah. it it's pathetic it's the worst thing i've ever put in my mouth after karela <laughs> which is bitter gourd i hate bitter gourd Okay yeah so uh, just because of tasting that you know i don't like to smoke Good. because if we start smoking then uh, some day you're going to have it. to eat that yeah to get over it you have to have nicotex right so i'm like you know let's start do that <laughs> okay well a um, little bit of history of coffee uh, coffee plants grew as i said it came out of africa right and in in ethiopia there's a region called kefa or kafa as they call they call it in ethiopian language so this is where uh, coffee plants were found initially around i think 800 ad is when uh, it was discovered but from there it was exported or maybe smuggled or somehow it came to arabia around uh, 15th century that's where it grew in popularity um there's a legend in arabia which says that uh, there was a goat herd goat herd in the sense a shepherd i think shepherd is for sheep so goat herd is for goats which was more predominant there uh this guy's name was kaldi he while you know taking his goats out uh, to eat and all that graze yeah graze actually that is the word <laughs> i was looking for so okay. when he was take let me start over so when he took his goats out for grazing he noticed that after eating a particular kind of berry it started the goats were all hyperactive okay they changed the way they were behaving and all that so this guy understood that there is something in it and he also tasted uh, started eating those berries and he started feeling ecstatic i mean like he was like super pumped up and all that and he spread this to everybody saying that you know these berries have some kind of magical power where it makes you feel all awesome well when you don't understand something you say that it's magic or of supernatural <laughs> and uh that's how it grew in popularity but that popularity was uh you know again hit with a snag because since coffee was giving you a high right it's a high it's a kind of high right and uh, according to islam and quran anything that intoxicates you is banned by quran so since you cannot drink alcohol even coffee was supposed to be supposed to be banned in saudi arabia i mean the arabian region and it was banned for quite some time but 
e- even though there was a ban it was so popular and people liked it so much that in spite of the ban they continued to drink coffee not just that they even opened the first coffee houses so, <laughs> so that's where this coffee culture actually started oh so the coffee culture di- did not start in like uh, europe or north america uh, it actually started in the arabia you mean yes uh, contrary to popular belief it didn't start and in and it started in a place where it was actually banned see that is the thing right wow. so it was kind of a revolution so in spite of things being banned they went ahead and uh, ensured that there are places where they sell coffee and it became a center of attraction for people to come and meet each other discuss ideas and all that so that's that's what is happening in coffee shops today yeah, as well right major business when i go place. yeah when i go to coffee shops on a saturday morning I see a lot of people coming and discussing stuff business they're discussing some people come to study they're discussing some topics and stuff like even that even we did something like that a few weeks ago don't don't you remember oh yeah our uh, podcasters meet yeah right so i i i, I mean I, other than that there are some other businesses that were completely based out of coffee shops as well all these multi level marketing businesses they find coffee shops to be a very attractive place where they can just purchase one uh, simple espresso and sit there for hours explaining business to you know poor guys who are going to lose their money are you talking about that uh, you know uh, business which was based out of ccd <laughs> yes exactly where uh, you buy a product and you make your friends buy the product and you know then in return for each of the friends joining you'll get some amount and all that i mean i never understood the business model anyway so that business also was based out of coffee houses itself so coffee house has an important place to play in uh, yeah like a imp- lot of good and bad things happen over there yeah so that's where it started so arabia was the uh, you know center where coffee grew in popularity right so that was a le- uh, legend that co- this is how coffee was uh, in uh, you know discovered um then coffee from arabia inevitably it had to come to europe because from europe there were many travelers and Arab- from arabia there were many travelers who you know kept traveling around 16th and 17th century it spread across europe one country you know one country at a time um uh, became very popular as usual and again it was banned in it was there was a, there was a proposal to ban it in U- europe as well uh because people started saying that it's kind of a magic potion which is making you high and all that but you know what the interesting point is um normally vatican takes a very uh, conservative approach to all this right but pope clement the 7th he refused to ban coffee he said we cannot let the non believers to be the only ones to enjoy coffee Are it is such a good serious? beverage that i am against actually banning it so he was an addict he was a <laughs> <laughs> he was an avid coffee lover wow. coffee lover is what we can understand that is so from awesome this. so probably we should thank him for you know uh, not letting uh, people ban coffee in europe and letting it spread yeah well if, all across the world if clement was not around then we wouldn't have had starbucks Thank you, Clement. Prof- Thank you, po- Pope Clement. Yeah, Clement the Seventh. So uh, <laughs> that's what happened in Europe. There were, I, I think, at least in history, there were at least five times when people have tried to ban coffee for various reasons, but it still survived. You know, when people uh, like uh, talk about banning coffee, the thing you should do is like make them drink it. That's all you have to do. Exactly. Give them a sip of coffee, and they'll understand why people are so much into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's about the popularity of coffee. And uh, until almost seventh, seventeenth century, Yemen was the only country which was exporting coffee. That was okay. the only place where you could actually, you know, cultivate coffee, and that was a country which was exporting it. Uh, but by the close of seventeenth um, century, the you know cultivation of coffee started uh, happening in Indonesia as well, Java especially, and In Americas Hawaii was one of the states where coffee plantation started in 1825. Okay. I think that is the only state where actually coffee is being produced today in uh, US. The US okay. Yep. So uh, like which one do they produce there Arabia or the Robusta? Uh, since I don't expect Hawaii to have high altitudes but yeah. um, I, I'm 
quite not sure about that yeah we'll check it out and probably if we Link cannot it find it show. yeah we will just skip it <laughs> if we can find it we'll put it somewhere <laughs> <laughs> otherwise why don't you guys find out and put it in the yeah. <laughs> comment we'll below show us the, like hit us up in the comments <laughs> you know below. this is what people do on youtube and other things Subscribe. when they say that you know they have given some facts about something if you think differently put them as comments below and we'll have a discussion so the same thing we would say if you know what kind of coffee hawaii is producing please comment it on our website we are at writerandgeek.com well if we get one comment we will be happy <laughs> <laughs> i was almost thinking we'll close the comment section anyway yeah, yeah so um hawaii started producing coffee as well um in the 20th century brazil became the leading producer of coffee coffee machines came to exist in 19th late 19th and early 20th century which we see in not exactly the ones which we see in coffee shops because uh, of they're course all nothing which is made o- over that yeah. time you know you'll see it now it's all developed right so yeah the earlier versions of coffee machines were produced during that time exactly yeah, yeah so uh, that's what it and instant coffee is a different uh, uh, variety of co- i mean it's not a variety of coffee instant coffee is a different way of extracting coffee where co- coffee is extracted and crystallized into solid uh, you know uh, soluble solid uh, material which can be just put in water or milk can just dissolve so that's what is more popular in india i think at least um i was uh, doing some research about these coffee uh, coffee which is available in india so be- the other day we went to the place called coffee mechanics which is near to our house it's a roastery so we've been going there a couple of times now and we love the coffee that they produce there uh we bought a packet of coffee from there um and so i was researching about other so i was <laughs> watching a video where one of the founders is explaining about their coffee business they started some time back but initially they started getting calls back from their customers saying that you know your coffee is not dissolving in water your coffee is not dissolving in milk what kind of coffee are you producing and all so she is explaining that you know indians have a, a, a you know culture where we use instant coffee a lot and people expect it to ju- just dissolve in their in their uh, you know uh, in in water or milk and just consume it but the brewing method which is more popular in the west uh, is probably not as popular in india but it's growing fast and even we were not i was not really aware of it for me instant coffee was the one which i was using until recently uh, now that i have no, uh, read about this that's when we went ahead and purchased a french press which is one yeah. of the methods of brewing coffee which we'll talk about probably in the in few minutes yeah so uh, even i used to feel little weird when you get coffee which had that uh, coffee powder or whatever in, in the bottom so uh, i prefer i used to prefer actually i used to prefer instant coffee a lot especially the brew one and uh, nescafe is something which i don't prefer much so yeah instant coffee is something which is very popular over here uh, and uh, you get that filter coffee too with lot of sugar and you know super uh, powerful yeah. filter coffee <laughs> it gives you a kick actually yeah, <laughs> you you just drink that you'll be a bust for like the whole day <laughs> it is so, the indian version of espresso yeah i love it i love it i'm not you know talking against it or something but uh, yeah that's the kind of coffee which indians love the one which dissolves and even i didn't know about uh, you know uh, coffees which existed uh, which did not dissolve with milk or water till recently i have i, I remember seeing it but uh, i didn't know that exclusively something like that existed yeah but that yeah the thing is that is the actual way of uh, making coffee and the one which we have been seeing for years <laughs> it is a version of uh, making coffee where you are actually losing most of the you know richness of the coffee and it's normally an, uh, you know most of the cases it's an inferior version of uh, good coffee anyway we'll get into the extraction method and stuff um, we, so coffee is produced from coffee beans right you know the coffee beans are ground and that is what we use to brew but before coffee before that um, coffee grows on coffee plant as in the form of berries so each berry usually has two coffee beans in it right there are single bean berries called pea beans and people say that it's more uh, aromatic and sweeter and flavorful and all that but yeah um, normally it occurs in pairs so the inside one berry there'll be two coffee beans 
um the beans are separated from the berries initially and dried to reduce the moisture content which is around 65 to 70% and it's brought down to 12, 12 to 13%. Wow. So there's a lot of drying involved and entire moisture is kind of, you know, uh, the water evaporates and the weight comes down a lot. Um basically uh, for processing coffee there are three major methods. Um first method is the dry method which is the most common method of doing it and which is the most simple method of doing it. as as it uh, says in the you know name it is just a process of drying it in under the sun under the sun so berries are placed under the sun on concrete or brick floors it takes around anywhere from 7 to 7 days you know maybe a few days to weeks almost 4 weeks yeah, for the entire depending on how much sun you get yeah depending on how much sun you get so in between the bean uh, the berries are raked so that all 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 the berries are evenly dried So during the so drying has to be perfect otherwise if you over dry the coffee beans will start breaking and if you are under drying it call, it it will you know attract fungi and bacteria and all that stuff um uh, once the drying process is completed um the berries and the beans are separated by using some machinery so that is a very simple way of doing it and this is the way uh, coffee is produced in the countries which are little economically backwards so that's this is more easy including india <laughs> probably but i think in, in indian coffee estates and all uh, they you, at least today in indian coffee estates they have uh, you know excellent machinery, machinery and stuff okay. because the coffee which we have bought it is extracted using the second method which is the wet method so okay. i'm sure that india is uh, you know capable of doing that at this point so this method produces better quality of coffee and requires much more sophisticated uh, equipments than the dry method way to go india yeah mm. so the skin and the pulp are removed using a pulping machine that uses a rotating drum uh, but even after that there will be a thin layer of pulp that still remains uh, which is removed by fermentation that's why that's why you if you look at some coffee it says a fruity taste and all that right oh. so fermentation happens uh, over 3 uh, to 4 days as the wet seeds are kept in tanks okay the remaining pulp is then washed off and the beans are dried under the sun or by passing hot air okay are they making coffee or uh, something else <laughs> it, but the coffee that comes out of it has a, a, a you know taste and aroma of fruits and wow. you know what berry Think kind of think about it, it coffee yeah. flavored beers you do have it right uh, yes yeah well, okay why didn't i think of it anyway yeah let's uh, move forward and the third method is called pulp natural process um this is kind of a combination of dry and wet method uh, there is no fermentation process that happens so after the pulp is uh, the external pulp is removed they are just allowed to dry for a long time and while it dries the remaining pulp is separated from the coffee beans so that is those are the three methods of um, extracting i mean processing coffee uh, post processing you will get the coffee beans which we have seen in roasteries and other places and you can even purchase coffee beans as they are um then it goes through a process of roasting so coffee beans are roasted from 180 to 250 degrees centigrade uh, for around 7 to 20 minutes which releases carbon dioxide carbon monoxide and water so we have when we purchase coffee uh, we have three options th- three or more than three options to choose light roasted medium roasted and dark roasted right a dark roasted is has more rich and dark appearance and light ones will have give you a lighter version of coffee but the interesting fact is more you roast a coffee lesser the caffeine oh okay yeah. so i used to think that dark roasted coffee we might have more caffeine until recently but when i did the research is when i got to know this and the one which we purchased yesterday is a light roast so that has so, more caffeine in it but it's the uh, least powerful one is it like it might be the least bitter one possible bitter okay yeah. bitter yeah yeah so the more you roast uh, you lose more ca- caffeine caffeine yeah So the beans uh, lose a lot of weight and expand under roasting process. Uh, roasting gives the aroma to coffee. The well, the moment you open the coffee jar, it the you know aroma just sp- spreads across. Right? Yeah, I remember so, that like in the morning when you opened it, even our cats. Yeah, I'm like super <laughs> freaked out. What is that? What they is have that? never huh? smelled something yeah. like that. They, I think I I saw that <laughs> the cat was completely confused. Yeah, they like they were sitting like well, probably like five feet, five meters away from you, right? Exactly. And, and, still and they were the thing is that it has a much more uh, you know developed sense of smell than us. Yeah. 
so what we smell from a close range they can smell from a you know a distance well i hope they liked it so as i mentioned roasting is what gives the aroma to coffee um again over roasting will kill the flavor <laughs> so which is the case in which is done in the case of robusta beans it is over roasted that's why it has um more bitterness but since it already has a l- double the caffeine it still will retain a lot of caffeine within it okay 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 yeah so but uh, people enjoy the other one arabica more than ro- robusta because of one of this is one of the reasons not everybody enjoys the bitterness of coffee but most people don't even know right like there are two uh, kinds of coffee right okay a week no maybe a week and a half back i didn't know this yeah that's what i'm saying because uh, people would be like uh, i'll have a coffee they don't even care like what kind you of know the funny thing having. is if you go to a coffee place where if they start asking you a question sir do you want arabica or robusto i'll be like how do i even this it'd be like going to a subway like uh, exactly. for the first time you go there they'll be like uh, sir uh, what kind of bread do you want you know this is one of the reasons <laughs> i very i i don't go to subway in fact because if i am ordering something i just want to see it in the menu and just tell them what to you know uh, what to give me i don't want them to ask me questions like what kind of bun you want then what kind of filling you want what kind of mayonnaise do you want and all that yeah, stuff that's true but i love subway like whenever i go there what i do is like don't give me tomatoes and uh, jalapenos put, put all the, all everything you can find other than that you don't like jalapenos seriously uh, not really interesting yeah okay um yeah so that is what is done in case of robusta so it they over roast it um so the older older days uh, the way of roasting coffee was to put them in rotating metal cylinder and the cylinder was placed over a source of heat so rotation was to make sure that the beans are getting roasted evenly yeah it's like you know roasting peanuts yeah kind of and like mixing cement <laughs> yeah cement mixer kind yeah. of yeah So once the uh, coffee beans are roasted before we can use it for uh, brewing coffee they are ground and there are different ground sizes as well so before that I, it might be probably a good time to explain the different kind of coffee that is available at uh, you know in these days so if you go to a coffee house you would have heard of something called espresso yeah so espresso is like highly concentrated coffee it it came from italy uh, so the way espresso is made they use finely ground coffee and uh, pressurized water is forced through it hot pressurized water is forced to it and it comes out from the other side with the flavor of coffee with a rich concentrated uh, concentration of coffee or and all the oils that is uh, available inside the coffee and it's called espresso so people normally you can take espresso as a shot like uh, they call it espresso shot it's very highly concentrated stuff or there are many other beverages which make uh, make use of espresso like you know cappuccino latte macchiato and all these things are made out of uh, espresso so the difference between cappuccino and uh, latte do you know what is the difference not really basically all these things uh, differ in the amount of milk that is actually added mm. to this so cappuccino is like you take espresso the concentrated coffee in a mug you add a little bit of milk and a lot of milk foam Mm, so okay. it's mostly the foam right foam and the espresso that is what cappuccino is latte is almost similar in composition except that it has lot more milk and lesser foam okay okay so it's it's more like the indian style i think yeah see uh, i don't order latte that, uh, that much it's more yeah that cappuccino. is not something that i order as well uh, i either order cappuccino or mocha mocha i love mocha now <laughs> mocha is similar to a cappuccino. cappuccino only thing is that it has chocolate in it chocolate syrup yeah syrup sauce or whatever it yeah. is yeah i like talking about espresso i have a funny experience because uh, when we like it was uh, probably during the time when we moved to bangalore i had no idea how these different coffees uh, work so uh, we went to ccd once uh, with one of some of my friends and i had no idea what to order so i saw this espresso thing and i didn't even know how to pronounce it so back then uh, i thought it was espresso <laughs> 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 in fact i also thought it thought uh, it was espresso be- yeah. in the beginning are we like uh, 
pulling our own legs over here like seriously <laughs> you know what i am sure the half of the people listening to this also thought it was espresso and yeah. i am i am sure that many of them are learning now that it's not espresso it's espresso espresso yeah so uh, i saw this thing and i thought i'll uh, instead of going for cappuccino cappuccino was the only thing i knew about it bec- uh, because you know it's really popular out here and i thought like i will go for something different and uh, i thought i'll have espresso i told them you know i want espresso and they asked me like uh, single shot or double shot i was like one single shot won't work with me i need more i i told them like i want double shot and uh, they 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 just looked at me like you know is this guy really human and i thought like what happened what did i do wrong so he bought the coffee and i have no idea how i finished it it m- must have taken me like at least one hour to like you know slowly slowly <laughs> sip it and finish it and uh, as far as i remember i didn't sleep that night <laughs> you know, i had a very similar experience with uh, espresso because i also discovered espresso by accident so i was with one of my friend and uh, we uh, went to meet one of my friend's brother he was an architect so we had to discuss some plans with him and all that uh, so we met him in one of the coffee day cafe coffee day which is a famous chain in bangalore so uh, we were sitting there um i didn't know what to order because i think it was my second or third visit to a ccd and i usually go there and just order some cold coffee or something like that whichever looks maybe a milkshake kind of a thing so we were sitting and uh, so this guy he uh, he ordered an espresso my friend ordered a cappuccino i was like you know i know what cappuccino is and it's very, as you said it's very popular it's there in songs and all that stuff let me try what this espresso is so my when i heard espresso i was like yeah it will be like rich and creamy with you know nice uh, sweet taste and all that when they bought espresso it was in a very small cup and it was just little i was like what the hell am i supposed to do with this this is so less and you know what uh, that guy uh, my friend's uh, brother he just took it just like a tequila shot i was like oh that's how you take it then i did the same and i felt it was one of the worst coffee experiences that i had because i was not expecting it to be like that instant regret yeah <laughs> right <laughs> because if if it was today i don't mind because i know exactly what espresso is and i don't mind drinking espresso as well because i'm more used to coffee and all that those days it's just a shock So that was my first experience with espresso. Yeah, because you go to this fancy coffee shop and you are like, okay, I'm ordering something fancy and you get this black coffee, like black coffee which is 10 times stronger, which is like even worse. Yeah. And you take a shot of that expecting that it uh, it would be sweet and it would have milk and all that. Your expectations are shattered. that is that's what i'm saying so it's not more it's not more about the taste of the thing it's about the shock that you get yeah and so yeah so i was telling you the difference between uh, all these different drinks now there is something called americano americano is just espresso plus hot water that is americano which is one of my favorite drinks uh, at least it keeps me awake when i'm driving at night yeah yeah whenever we like go for like drives uh, yes. to like our native place and all that <laughs> yeah you always take uh, americano. americano that is yeah. my favorite drink for drive Uh, then another drink is called macchiato uh, which until recently i didn't know what it is i have had macchiato once but i didn't know what is a composition so there are two kind of macchiato one is espresso macchiato and other one is latte macchiato there is one more called caramel macchiato as well which is a modification of latte macchiato so espresso macchiato is take a, a shot of espresso and pour a little bit of milk into it that is espresso macchiato latte macchiato is you take a glass of milk and you pour a shot of espresso into it so this kind of goes so frothed milk has froth on the top and milk uh, underneath right espresso will form a layer between the froth and the milk so you will see a layer of froth white color then you will have a brownish layer of coffee and then you will have a layer of milk it looks nice that is latte macchiato caramel uh, macchiato is similar thing similar to latte macchiato except that you pour caramel caramel sauce on top that is uh, what is very yeah. famous at roastery you yeah, I, I, i actually love it i wanted to try it once uh, and i did and it was like one excellent drink yeah so the reason i explained this is because uh, when the coffee beans are ground the way it is uh, ground depends on the way we it's going to be used so for espresso you need a very finely ground coffee Uh, we have a french press which is like uh, it has a piston and it has a filter you just press it down to filter out the coffee that requires more coarsely ground coffee because otherwise uh, 
the coffee is going to get through the filter and you know it it will come into your cup which is something you know again each of the different methods like uh, some people use something called a mocha pot mocha pot create something similar to an espresso where you have a pot in which water is boiled boiled water is then pushed through the uh, pushed through another chamber where you have coffee powder and it comes out of the other end uh, so looking something like a very concentrated coffee so, so that is mocha pot then you have this pour over method where you put coffee into a filter on top of a vessel and you just pour the hot water and it it gets collected in the vessel when uh, you know as it moves through the coffee extracting all the flavor and stuff yeah the vietnamese tea which i had from mm-hmm. coffee mechanics they use the pour over method and it's amazing especially that uh, content they have under the coffee which is uh, condensed milk when you mix it you get a an amazing flavored uh, coffee yeah, through ev- the pour over method even the first coffee which uh, i had from uh, coffee mechanics was a pour over method and the barista himself suggested that he'll uh, brew it in the pour over method i think i've read that some people say it extracts the more uh, you know flavor from coffee without actually pulling in the additional oils and all that so it's kind of pure coffee that you get okay uh, there are few other methods of extraction something called cold brewing method And normally all the brewing methods involve hot hot water so this method coffee is kept in contact with the water overnight like for 24 hours in a refrigerator and it brews into nice and lovely coffee that's something i haven't heard before because it's usually like brewing process involves hot water or even milk this is something new for me to like seriously i've never heard about you know cold brew well in fact it's very popular and uh, i am planning to buy a cold brewing apparatus sometime in the next month so that we can try <laughs> get a flavor of both i don't mind you know the thing is uh, like uh, when it comes to india we we would have had all the kinds of coffee like most people would have had all the kinds of coffee yeah and they might even be like able to differentiate between each of them but they don't know what's going behind you know how it's made or what right. goes into it that's something which uh, most people don't know like only like those who are like enthusiastic about coffee and the art of coffee making know about it so uh, i'm sure you wanted to do an episode on this because you wanted to educate people on this exactly because for me this was a revelation because when whenever people used to talk passionately about coffee i never understood why what is big deal about all this because for me it was always that instant coffee uh, the brew instant coffee you bring it you hot, uh, you heat milk and you just put few teaspoon full of uh, coffee into it and just drink that's why i was not, never a fan of coffee as well but when i got it, got to understand the sophisticated ways of brewing and the science behind it i'm like i'm i'm a fan of coffee now so now i'm you know reading a lot of articles and stuff so i thought okay you know what we should be doing an episode on coffee yeah and uh, you'll also see like most lot of people who have uh, coffee holic and all kind of stuff in their profile i'm pretty sure even those people don't know about it you know uh, uh, yeah next time i'm matching with someone on tinder who who is written you know coffee holic <laughs> or something i'm going to ask them you know in, don't, in detail you know, about i'll tell you what things. you take them to uh, <laughs> one of the coffee brewing places ask them to place an order yeah for Direct, me to right yeah, ask them to place an order let's see how sophisticated and ask them to even tell the barista in what brewing method they want uh, the coffee to be brewed because each of the method that i explained earlier like the mocha pot the pour over the french press each uh, gives a different flavor of coffee so you that is a really good way of filtering as well and just put ask a question do you know what cold brewing is Yeah that's a good way to you know take your date down <laughs> <laughs> and you know what cold brewing is in fact safe because i don't know if you remember there was one case in history where uh, a lady sued mcdonalds for 2.9 million dollars because the coffee that was being served was so hot that it burned her uh, body initially she asked for just 20000 bucks to cover her medical bill but mcdonalds being mcdonalds big company they refused to pay they said that coffee is expected to be hot she said if it was that hot it should have been mentioned on the you know cup that it's very hot. i think these days it's mentioned in the cup saying the coffee is very hot or something like that um i don't know which side is uh, to be frank uh, you know on the right side because coffee is expected to be hot but anyway she won the case and uh, mcdonald's had to pay her 2.9 million dollars maybe mcdonald's so uh, they paid the price for serving such uh, bad food <laughs> <laughs> i know karma <laughs> yeah so uh, 
that's what uh, those are the different ways coffee is brewed and all that you can read about this we'll put it in the show notes uh, go and research about uh, how coffee is brewed there is a lot of information on the internet and if we are trying to explain everything this episode might go for maybe 2 3 hours you can keep talking about it um but yeah those are uh, the ways coffee is extracted and brewed when we take coffee we never realize that there is so much that goes behind the scenes yeah like uh, before this episode i had very limited knowledge about coffee and the only thing i pro- properly knew that there was this writer french writer who used to drink 72 coffees a day <laughs> that was voltaire yeah that's the only thing i actually knew do you know do you know something coffee. you can actually overdose on coffee but you need to take 100 cups of coffee for that but Is that before even possible before even you overdose you will die because of the water content that goes inside you oh, you yeah. know that you can't take more than 4 liters of water or something right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and before we end i want to discuss about something that we promised that we'll discuss about kopi luwak uh, oh, which yeah. <laughs> which uh, literally translate to civet coffee in indonesian language um, it is very popular for the way it is uh, extracted so basically uh, in normal wet method we explain that the coffee is extracted from the coffee berry and you know it's dried and then it is removed and all that stuff in this case there are certain civets which are grown in the farms and they go and eat these berries uh, and for your information civets are animals yeah civets are animals which look like foxes they go and eat these berries and they excrete them and the uh, beans are extracted from their excreta and process so that's why it is famous yeah and uh, i knew about this coffee since watching the movie bucket list yeah that's even i got like, to know like it's about. mentioned that uh, it is one of the best coffees you can ever have so i had like high expectations from it and uh, <laughs> once we had it it actually felt like drinking poo <laughs> <laughs> in fact even i had high expectations but um to be you know truth be told it was mm, underwhelming i mean um, i don't know if it lives up to the hype no actually in my case underwhelming would be an understatement, an understatement. <laughs> okay so it was that bad yeah you know imagine the person who would have tasted the coffee for the first time i mean how did they even know that it the reason that they do is because uh, it, the digestive juices contain a lot of uh, you know acidic stuff and you know, it's it gives a like, different it, flavor it's almost like asking like who is the first person who milked the cows yeah you know something uh, coffee tasting is not a, a bad job you know the costa coffee they have a coffee taster and he has his tongue insured for 10 million dollars wow yeah that is something new okay that's interesting right yeah yeah so that's uh, pretty much about coffee you can continue this research on your own uh, there is a lot to learn about coffee and if you are a coffee enthusiast do go and understand the behind the scenes things about coffee it will make you even more uh, attracted to coffee and visit your nearest uh, you know a coffee coffee shops go and support them uh, in india the culture is just coming up so yeah why don't you go and enjoy and if you have more information uh, you can comment down below <laughs> <laughs> okay then bye <laughs> thank you